just bear with me. I'm just getting things set up here. Well, hello, Miss Carol. How are you tonight? All right. I'm a bit late. I apologize for that. I had, as you can see, I was doing a couple of test things because I had an idea. So when you have the idea, you kind of go with it, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, I know there's some other people that are coming, but they're going to be late. They have other commitments, so they're going to join us afterwards. Um, like I said, the size of the watercolor paper is unfortunately incorrect. So if you want to cut your paper now, you can cut your watercolor paper to four and a half by three and three eighths. And for those of you that do not know, each one of the tick marks on here is a 16. So it's going to be 1 8, 2 8, 3 8. So it's two lines past a quarter. Okay, so that's 4 and a half by 3 and 3 8. And once again, I apologize for the um, mistake in that paper size. We are going to get messy here tonight. Hello, Miss Melanie. Glad you could join. We are just having a little chit chat here. Um, I don't know whether you heard the paper size that I gave you for the watercolor paper is incorrect. So if you want to correct that, on your um, supply list it's four and a half by three and three eighths for the watercolor paper all right we are going to get started and uh, if you guys have any questions please ask um, as per usual um, I usually make a card and then I make an alternate on camera with you um, today is going to be a little bit different because um, this card is not difficult. Let me just start by saying it is not difficult. There's a lot of parts and pieces and there's a lot of things that we're gonna do to it, but nothing we do is gonna be difficult. That being said, I'm going to start out the video by showing you the card that I made last night and explaining a few things. After that, I'm, we're going to make a card together, but I'm going to change my card up because I thought of a couple of different things I'd like to do to it. So I know Carol is stamping and I know Melanie is not, and I know there are others coming, um, but they can rewind the video and watch it. So this is the card I made last night. And this is, I'll explain it to you. It's just a basic white card base. And then I have a Highland Heather piece here that I embossed with the um, Hive 3D folder, okay? And then I have Mossy Meadow and I have three panels of Mossy Meadow. 
So all of those are just parts and pieces of a normal card. The greeting is just stamped, die cut with a tag, glued onto a scrap and then fussy cut. And we all know how to make these um, dragonflies. Obviously I used the dragonfly garden for this one. Put some gold thread in behind and some gold um, gems. The only thing that's different about this part card that is artsy fartsy is really hard to see. That's why I'm going to change my card up. This is the watercolor paper. We're going to make this paper or work on this paper as a single panel and then we're going to cut it into three strips so I'm going to explain to you what I've what I've done here I put a wash of water over the watercolor paper no let me say that again I took my crayons and on this one I used white and purple crayons and it's really hard to see because this is so light but I just did some circles on my watercolor paper with this end of the crayon what I'm suggesting that you do is use this end of the crayon because you'll get a wider swath and um, use colors that are darker than use white for sure but use colors that are darker than the, what you're going to use for an ink to watercolor wash with. Then I used the Ranunculus Romance stamp set and, and stamped these images in Highland Heather. And then I used the dot stamp and stamped the black ink. So in a nutshell, that's what we're going to do. It's not hard. I'm telling you, it is definitely not hard. But I wanted you to see what you were up against before you freaked out. So, as I said, I am going to switch things up a bit. I'm going to, not going to do the same card. I'm going to do something different. And these are two pieces of watercolor paper. Before the video, I loaded these with water. And I did one in a wash of crumb cake and one in a wash of soft suede. Just to see which one I preferred. I still don't know but I'm gonna go with one of them and I've switched my colors so that my crayons are um, the closest to mango that I could get an orange and a white and remember we're going to use the bottom end of the crayon to get a wide swath I've got a little cup of water and I have my new water painters and I absolutely love these because look at the size of that brush. There's a nice thick one like that. Somebody's car alarm is going off. I hope you guys can't hear that. Then there's a bigger one and then there's a smaller one. Can you guys hear that car alarm? Is it distracting? <laughs> Oh, there, somebody decided to shut it off. Okay, so we're going to use water painters. And I've chosen some Mossy Meadow and some Mango Melody Stampin' Blends. I've got Crumb Cake and Soft Suede and Memento Black ink. And I've actually brought in some of the Gold Leaf. Hi, Michelle. Glad you could join us. Yes, I brought in some of the gold leaf. So, um, the, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. I think I am, but I don't know. So, Michelle, I have to tell you, if you go to make this card, there is a mistake in the instructions. The watercolor paper needs to be four and a half by three and three eighths. All right, we are going to get started. So, I have a whole bunch of bits and pieces here, and I have a little gold butterfly, and that's from the best butterfly bundle, I believe. I have my watercolor paper, and yes, you really need to have watercolor paper for this, because 
you need something that's going to stand up and stand up well because we're going to soak it. And I have a whole bunch of bits and pieces in here. I have a white card base. Then this time I used Mango Melody and I know that's hard on the eyes. And I put that through the Hive 3D folder. So I am going to right now attach this to my card front. And because it's a heavily embossed piece, I'm using lots of Tombow. And we're just going to center this up as best we can. Doesn't want to budge on me here. There we go. I know that's hard on the eyes, but it's going to get better. I promise you. Then the three cardstock mats are going to cover up most of that mango. Okay, so it's going to be a little less hard on the eyes. And once again, I'm going to use Tombow. And how I did this on my first card, I'll pull this card out so Michelle can see what we're going to be attempting to do, sort of. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Is I put it on one side first and try to match the borders on these three sides. Okay, something like that. Then I'm going to put the glue on the other piece and go to the other end. And that way I'm not going to be fighting not having my, oops, <laughs> almost put my glue in the water. So now I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to lay this this way so I have a visual all the way across. And I'm going to do the same thing. Try to match the top end and match the borders on three sides. So now all I have to worry about is splitting the difference between these two. If I had to put the middle one on first, there's no way it would even be close to being even. I know myself well. <laughs> all right. That, in a nutshell, is our card base. Okay? We're going to set that aside. I have pre-stamped a sunflower in case you were wondering if I had lost my marbles and I was going to use my blends and I may still I'm going to try it on one of these leaves because I embossed this this is embossed with um, black embossing powder so I'm going to try using light mossy meadow on these leaves and see what happens. I'm going to try to stay off the embossing as much as possible and see how this works out. Because I don't want to ruin my blends. And I'm not liking this much, but I'm pretty much committed here now for the leaves. So this tells me that I'm going to do the leaves with these blends, but I'm going to do, I'm going to watercolor the flower. Ooh, that tip is toast. So I guess we have to use the little tip. So it doesn't matter what you use for a focal image. If you wanted to use the hippopotamus, you could use the hippopotamus and put two of them on here or whatever you wanted, right? It really doesn't matter because it's all about the background that we're going to create. Um, I'm just going to quickly try to quickly get some color on these bits. Like I said, I'm going to do watercolor on the sunflower because I don't like the way these blends are going with the embossing. If I had it just used Memento Black, I think it would have been better. 
So if you're going to use blends, stamp in the Memento Black. If you're going to watercolor, stamp in Stays On or um, Heat Emboss, which is what I did here. So we're going to have leaves done with blends. And then we'll set those out of the way. And now I need to watercolor this baby. And I'm going to use mango. I'm going to start with soft suede in the middle. Because I don't want it to be too terribly dark. So I'm just very, very roughly with this big brush. I have a little pot of water here too, a rag, and I'm going to switch, maybe not, I'm just going to bring in my silicone mat, oh, I lost my comments again, oh, I'm sorry my video's cutting out, it must be internet, I'm sorry, I hope that it works if not I'll retape it and then just post it um, all right so I'm going to continue with mango if I can get some ink here no it's not going to let me so let me grab a block this is a very good trick take a clear block and press it in your ink pad and pick up ink And you have a little paint palette. And like I said, I'm not being fancy or fussy here. I'm just using the great big water painter and just tossing the color on. And by the looks of the way this is drying, I'm thinking we're going to have to change the middle, or at least part of the middle, to um clean my brush here to um early espresso because this looks kind of faded and pale to me so even if i do the very very center in early espresso make it a different water painter here Thing. All right, we will set that aside and let it dry. See what happens with that. I'll clean this brush. All right, now on to our card. How's the video? Is it still cutting out, or am I? still here what's going on talk to me ladies all right i am going to go to soft suede where did those two little samples go i'm going to move this out of the way i think i'm going to go with the darker soft suede sample and so I'm going to take my crayons and use the bottom end and make some marks. Now, last time I did circles as in this way. Today, I'm going to make squiggles. Orange, mango, white. another orange and I think that's about what I'm going to do and by using the the bottom end of your crayon it's much much wider because on this card uh, it's really really hard to see I used the fine end of the marker or of the crayon and it's really hard to see so basically 
basically that's all you do with your crayon is you just make some marks on there so now we are going to take our soft suede ink pad and that big brush and we are just going to cover this with ink I'm just going to grab this and get this moving and then I'm going to grab some water and just load this paper with water first and then I'm going to put the ink on it. And in just a minute I will pick this up so that you can see that the crayon is resisting the ink. Okay, I have no idea what this is going to turn out like. Uh, I hated my first one when I start, first started it, but I didn't hate it when I was done. It looks totally different when you're done. Alright, so that is that. I am going to give this another squeeze. Oh, it could be your internet, Carol. Well, it's too bad. Because it looks on my end like everything's going all right. Michelle and Melanie, is, is the internet cutting out for you? I've done a couple of coats on there. Now I'm going to grab my heat tool and we're going to dry it. Yes, Melanie, that fat water brush is a godsend. I have a ton of water brushes but I don't have that fat one so I ordered the three pack and I just love the big one all right we're gonna stop this just sometimes Michelle well it's it could be Facebook it very well could be Facebook all right. Now, let's really give this a good dry. And this is going to take a bit because this paper is really, really thick. But before we go on to the next step, we have to make sure that this paper is dry. So heat tool to the rescue. I think we're good. All right, let me have a little sip here. And we will go on to the next step if I can find my stamp set. I am looking for Ranunculus Romance and Daffodil Daydream. All right, so I'm going to use this stamp here. It's just kind of a, a distressy looking ledger type stamp. I'm going to use that and I think that's it for there. And then in the Daffodil Delight I'm going to use this big polka dot stamp. Pardon me. And I am definitely going to be using my Stamparatus because we really, I just want to get the 
cover on that brush. We really um, will need to stamp this multiple times because of the texture that's on the cardstock. All right, so we will start with this one. And I'm going to put one there like that. And I'm going to start with soft suede see what that looks like. If I don't like it, we will move up to a darker color. And I think that was a good choice. All right, now I'm going to put my finger here and I'm going to flip this. No, I can't. I'm going to have to clean that stamp because there's a definite up and down to the stamp because there's words on it. We really don't want our words upside down. So, this, I'm going to put one half off here. And I'm lucking out, really. I thought that I was going to have to stamp this multiple times, but this one seems to be stamping pretty good. I've only had to hit it the once. Last night I fought with it. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to grab a block. Maybe. There's one. And I'm just going to use the edges here. And remember, we're going to be cutting a little bit off of one side of this. All right. So far, that's what I have. Okay. Take the worst of that off. Get a little more water. There we go. And clean off this mat. Next step is going to be our dots. And this time I am going to use Early Espresso. I stamped my greeting in Early Espresso, so I think I'm going to stick. Wow, that's really big. Let's go this way. I think I'm going to stick with this. Hopefully these dots go on as nice as... Yep. And there's no rhyme or reason as to how I'm doing this. I'm just twisting it around and filling it in. Sorry, lost my comments again. Yeah, it is fun, Melanie. It's, it's messy. And it's fun sometimes to get messy. All right, let me clean this one. All right, I've got a ton of ink on this block. the worst of it off anyway all right so this is what we have so far doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot right now that's okay I am going to hit it with the heat tool again just to make sure that the ink is good and dry How is that possible? Well, well, that's not good. Good thing I have another one. Let me dig it out here.
All right. This one is like 20 years old. And it's not dead. And my Stampin' Up! one is new. And I think I just killed it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give this a little bendy bendy. And let's go back to this and have a look. I think we need some more ink on here. I really do. It's not dark enough for my liking. So I'm going to grab that water painter. And I'm not going to put quite as much water in it as I did the first time. And you can see I'm not taking any care whatsoever with um, how I'm adding the color there. It's just, it's going on and that's it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do the center again as well with the early espresso. And I'm not going to dilute it as much because I want the darkness. I'm just going with the dampness that is on the brush. All right, we're going to take the heat tool to that as well. Close these up. All right, more heat. And clean up the ink because we want this dry so we can put it on our card good. So let's get those out of the way. Give this a minute. Now we have to cut this up. So these pieces that we put on our card, I lost my instruction sheet, were three and a half by one and a half. So these pieces need to be, oh, let me find it. It's down here buried somewhere. These pieces need to be three and three eighths high by one and three eighths. So these have to be cut down to one and three eighths inch strips. So let's do that. One. One, two, three eighths. Make sure it's straight. Watch your lines. And then we're going to continue. Slide it over. One and three eighths. And slide it over again to one and three eighths. And this is the amount of scrap we have left. If you had have done my instructions that I gave you last night, you wouldn't have had enough. All right. So we can definitely see the um, distress in there. And there we've got it right because I'm following that orange line all the way down. So now we need to put this on and we need to put on lots of adhesive because this will curl up and it is watercolor paper. You want it on there really well. And there's just little tiny borders here for each piece. Now I purposely didn't put the gold leafing on yet because I wanted to cut these strips up first 
and you're probably thinking, what is she thinking? But you just wait. I want to try it. It might be awful. Who knows? It very easily could be awful. But you'll never know till you try, right? So there, there's the lines. They're following through. I don't know whether you guys can see that on camera or not, but the crayon lines are there. This is going to go in the middle, like so, with these leaves, okay? So I'm gonna have these leaves peeking out somewhere, somehow. Something like that. And somewhere here, I already did the greeting. <laughs> What in heaven's name did I do with it? Row, row. Is it inside? No. Oh, here it is over here, I bet. Yep. So there is the greeting. Okay. So that can kind of go like that. But I'm going to put this little butterfly on. And I thought it would be neat to have some gold leafing as well to play off that gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of my flower to start with. Because I definitely want this popped up. I'm going to put a ton of them on here because this is warped and it's frankly heavy. It really is. So I'm going to load it up and first things first, we'll put on our flower. Then we'll tuck our leaves under and if I can't get the leaves all under, I'll just trim them to fit because I really loaded up the dimensionals here on purpose. I haven't used this stamp set in forever, so when I was trying to think of an alternate, I thought, I'm going to use that one. Alright, so let's just pop this baby on right here, like so. And then we could tuck that leaf. I'm kind of thinking I want my butterfly there. Maybe I should put my butterfly here. All right, I'm going to put some Tombow on the back of this leaf and we're going to tuck it in and be done with it. And this one will go down here. And as you can see, there's too much leaf to tuck under, so I'm just going to snip some off and then tuck it under. All right, dimensionals on the back of the greeting, only on one side though, because I'm gonna put it like this across the flower. So I'm only gonna put two dimensionals on this end. And I'm going to put Tombow on the rest. And I just stamped this greeting in um, Burly Espresso and then just matted it on a piece of Burly Espresso. And I'm just matching the borders. Right? I'm going to just leave that for a minute. Now, I want to get a sponge dauber. And I want to show you guys something that I learned. We were always taught to use this gilded leafing with heat and stick powder. Yes, it works beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. However, it's time consuming. And it's hard to see the heat and stick powder. So, 
I'm going to show you an alternate way to use this. Tombow. I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow right there. I'm just going to put that butterfly there for a minute. And I'm going to touch, just pick it up with a sponge, and I'm just going to touch areas where I'd like to see a little bit of gilded leaf. I had to turn my fan off or I'd have these flakes everywhere. And I'm just going to, as I go, press a piece of this gilded leaf where I touched. Okay. Oh, that's a great big one. I don't want that great big one. All right, we're going to continue our journey. Put a little bit here and there. And the trick to this one is just to give it a minute for the Tombow to dry. Just a wee bit. Oh, I need another piece right there. Alright, so I'm going to grab another sponge. And this is my glue, that's the gluey sponge. All right, I'm going to cover this up for a minute. I'm just going to take off my butterfly and take this sponge and polish it. And where there's no glue, it will come off. And where there's glue, it will stick. What do you think of that? I think we need to put a little bit right there, even though there's going to be a butterfly there. Because it looks funny. And all these little flakes, you can use those. You don't need to just give that a second to set up. And then I'll polish that. So what's your thoughts on this gold leafing? Are you a fan of it on this card or not? That was my big brainiac idea, was to add some, oops, stuck to my finger instead of the card. That is my big brainiac idea, was to add that gold leafing to that distressed background. Now, I did that instead of putting the gold thread on like I did on that card. However, I am going to put on, if I can find them, some gilded gems. I think that will still be very nice on here and add just a titch more sparkle here and there. And I kind of like the idea of the gold with the distress. All right. I really like this. The only thing that I would do differently is this background here that I embossed. I think I'd do it in crumb cake. I'm not a fan of orange to start with and that mango is by far not my favorite color, but it's all a matter of personal taste, right? Some people love oranges. Um, so yeah, that's the card for tonight with the gilded leafing and all that distressing and the crayon resist. It's like a whole lot going on. 
This one is a much more feminine, softer, subtler version. But they were both made exactly the same way. So yes, I'm challenging you guys to give this a try. It doesn't have to be exactly this pattern, but try something with a distressed crayon background and like go to town on it and see what you can come up with. I really, really look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, have some fun getting messy, right? All right, that is it for this Wednesday night. I'm back here Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon Central Standard Time uh, for short lunch break with Shell videos. And I'm here every Wednesday night at 6.30. I thank you guys so very much for joining me. Get stampin'. Bye-bye.